welcome to CES 2014. This is Gavin along with my good friend. Kevin Beck. Kevin Beck, man. It's good to be here. We're in Las Vegas for the world's largest electronics conference. Yeah. And Lenovo, we did not come empty handed. We just, uh, we just revealed, unveiled, whatever the word is, mm -hmm. the all new ThinkPad <laughs> X1 Carbon. Carbon, right Kev? Yep. What the, do you got? The same as the previous name, but new X1 hey, Carbon. I, you cannot say same <laughs> as it ever was for this thing. It's all no, new. No, no, totally brand new. And there's a um, lot to talk about, right? Right. So let's start with what is the same, right? Same ThinkPad. What, what was it, right? Right. What ThinkPad, construction, testing, mil specs, carbon fiber, race cars, airplanes. This thing is made out of the same <laughs> stuff that airplanes and race cars are made right. out of. What more can you say? Right, but uh, I think the, one of the, like from a mechanical engineering perspective, we got this down with a touchscreen to be as thin as the previous generation without a touchscreen. So you've got the, what has to be, so a touchscreen always in, inherently is heavier, right? right but right. we managed to whittle it down yep. and we with our little whittling sticks. Right, so we're at like eight, uh, less than 18 millimeters, right at about 2.8, 2, between 2.8, 2.9 pounds. So, uh, so this thing is uh, this thing is awesome. And again, this is this is a uh, laptop that's designed to be you know the ultimate, the, yep. the professional's best friend. I believe you'll see <laughs> the, the tagline yeah. "professional redefined." Right. And uh, Kevin, it's a it's a beauty. Yeah. Um, the, the first thin, the, the thin and light beauty shot, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, the first thing I notice when you open yep. it up is is the display. Talk to me a little bit about the display. I know it's actually uh, quite a bit of an upgrade from the previous version, right? Yep. So we. Uh, on the high end here with the touchscreen, uh, WQHD 2560 by 1440 screen. WQHD? WQHD. It sounds like a radio I, station. I used to listen it? to that station when I was a kid, actually. Actually, I need to look that up and see if that is an we, actual radio station. We could write them a letter. <laughs> yeah. So that's a, that's a super, I've seen the term color burst, color burst display. Right. So that's really just like the preponderance of all the goodness, right? Uh, it's bright, uh, 300 nits, WQHD, uh, bezel-less, thin touchscreen. Um, contrast yeah. ratio, so just like everything that went in together, we kind of wanted to uh, just give that a name for the preponderance of goodness in the screen, hence I, Color Burst. I think preponderance of goodness would be a nice tagline <laughs> for this as no, well. It's a band name. Right, yeah, it's a great, it sounds like a punk band. Um, and right. so, and another upgrade from the previous version was yep. the battery life. I know yep. this thing just yep. was released to the world, and by the way, this is actually yep. on sale now. Yep, um, on sale. As but of uh, just released yeah. released to the world this week, and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the conversation has been about the battery life. I've seen some people claim that it's 70% improvement. I know we're not making that claim, but right. but what is the what is the story on the battery okay, life? Okay, so the previous version with the old generation processor, we rated that at about five hours. You know, lab testing, such and such. Uh, but this is nine hours, right? So this is your latest. Intel uh, Core i, up to Core i7, fourth generation Haswell processor, uh, much better battery life. Okay. Right? Okay. I have to say, I have the previous version and I have not had any problems with the battery life, so I was interested that yeah. people were focusing on that as a, as a theoretical weakness of the right. previous version, so well, but but they, well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't turn down nine hours either. No, though. no, no, but they both still have the, uh, the rapid charge, right? Right. So you're going to get to like 80% of your battery life in uh, significantly less than an hour. Yep, right? and I've literally, so, I've literally had those moments where yeah. you're at the airport and you have a 30 minute layover and boom, you're charged yeah, for yeah, your next flight. Absolutely, absolutely. Which is great. Uh, so just uh, you know, to kind of get the, uh, the, the standard uh, uh, unboxing stuff out of the way. I know uh, you and your ports. Yeah, we did add a, a couple of uh, uh, things this year. We've now got our new OneLink Pro port, or our OneLink docking port, which right. will actually accept the OneLink Pro or the, or the older OneLink dock, right? So it's power and docking in one cable. Right, plug it in, you've got a dock. Uh, in the case of the OneLink Pro, up to uh, six USB ports, Display port, uh, DVI, Ethernet, yep. and uh, audio. Yeah, and, and it's worth noting. Look elsewhere yep. on our YouTube channel for a video on yep. One Link, and it's that's something I think it's one of those kind of unsung yep. gadgets that we have yep. that people seem to really appreciate. Yep. Uh, what else you got? We got HDMI mini Display Port. So HDMI is a net ad for this year. Uh, Ethernet and your uh, headphone jack, or sorry, not Ethernet, uh, USB headphone jack. Correct. And then on the other side here, uh, we've got uh, USB, and we have a proprietary dongle for Ethernet, but. The good news is it is native Ethernet functionality. Okay, what does that mean for non non uh, geeks? So for probably about ninety percent of end users, it's not ever going to be something they're going to care that much about. Okay. Uh, but for corporate uh, corporate IT administrators who, in many cases, like to boot these things off of a network in order to image them. Okay. Right? So they're rolling out a huge fleet of, right, uh, right. of PCs. Right. Okay. You're not having to deal with like emulation through USB and drivers. It is native Ethernet through a dongle. Sure. All right. Okay. Makes cool. sense. 
All right, so next thing I want to talk about is one of the uh, the big changes and what I think is one of the absolute coolest things about the uh, about the new X1 Carbon uh, is our adaptive keyboard row. And this is this is quite remarkable. You and me got to look yep. at this a month ago or so, right. and I have to say it it blew my mind. So how does it work, Kev? It's it's a, okay. it's basically you can cycle through a number of choices on your on your function bar, right? Correct, correct. So to make a very long story short, one of the key things that came out of like last year's big research with all of our customers for this generation of ThinkPads was that people were pretty interested in having expanded functionality, right? Things like uh, you know new keys and direct access to things like voice over IP for doing video conferencing, for doing web conferencing. Things like this also has gesture control. It also has voice control. So we wanted to put in direct keys to be able to access that. This doesn't really save you a lot of time. You've got to dig down through five menus to activate the thing to tell it to open something with your voice, right? Sure. <laughs> well, and like you say, yeah. you mentioned voice control and gesture control. It, it essentially gives people options as to how they want right, to interact right. with their PC and what they want to what, yeah. what they want to sort of front load. Right. But long story short, on the old traditional type keyboard where you had to press, you know, function whatever to get to that or all this, you know, whatever to get to that. We had about, we had over 30 different functions that were mapped as alternates on uh, 20 different keys. Uh, and really? we laid out the sort of wish list for everything that we wanted in this new one. It was going to be 46 different functions. Wow. Right? But right. then the other big thing that came out of all these uh, end user studies and talking to our customers that people wanted simplicity. Right? So how do you balance those Everybody two? Everybody wants everything and they want it to look really, really and they simple. they want it right now. Sure. So here's well, that's, what we that's did. The, that's the history of design <laughs> in one sentence, what you just said. Uh, so we have an adaptive keyboard row. So you've got four different sets of keys okay. that are adaptive and contextual. And what I mean by that is they can change the adaptive part. And contextual, they will come up in certain situations when you need them. Okay. Right. So let's just go through the basic functionality. This is the home row. Right. Okay. So you got volume up, volume down, screen brightness, search, your Windows keys. Right. You know, get you to your apps. Show all your current apps that are currently running. Right. Take us back here. Uh, cut. Uh, direct access to any you know, whatever you designate as your cloud okay. service. Uh, voice control and gesture control. Nice. Uh, I tap that again. I get to my web interface. Back key. Refresh. Uh, open a new tab. I tap that again. Oops. If I can hit it with my finger. I get to my voice over IP row. Okay. So again, your video conferencing, and you want you want all those controls handy. You don't want right. to have to be clicking through menus. Right. Mic up and down. Camera off and on. Uh, you can change the beam forming characteristics of the microphone. Uh, the to beam forming characteristics. Beam, beam not bean, beam. Not, I thought you meant beam, like I thought you were talking about bourbon, Kevin. <laughs> Uh, Honestly. Whether you're one person or multiple people. Sure. Uh, and then most importantly for, for traditional users such as myself, we have the full traditional, I'm not hitting something right here, we have the full traditional function. Okay. Mode, right? And this, this raises, again, <laughs> this thing's been out for a couple days, and this yeah. raises a, a really crucial point, right? Yep. So the, there's a misnomer that Lenovo yeah. has gotten rid of the function bar, right? No, no, no. We've, we're not, just, we've not gotten rid of the function F1 keys, right? F1 through F12. Right. So and if I, I wanted to just leave my function keys there 24-7, I could do that, there's right? There's a very simple software setting. You can go in and pick which of the four, you know, one of them, two of them, three of them, four of them, that you want to be in the rotation, and then you can pick which one you want to be the default. Okay. Right. So if you want to be an absolute traditionalist, uh, you pick your function keys to be your default, I and do. they're available all the time. Okay. Right? Uh, by default, Understood. the classic home row with volume up, volume down, yep. that's the default one, right? But. Um, very cool. So, move this down a little so bit again, time. more more options for for mm -hmm. more ways that people are computing. The same way we talked yep. about voice and gesture. And I, I got to be honest, gesture control to me is always a little bit. It's easy to make fun of in some right. ways. It's like, hey, look at me, look at yeah. me, look at me. Well, it's one of those things that's kind of in its infancy, right? Right. You know, it's it's cool. Uh, you it's know, or fun. At least interesting to sit there. You know, if I've got this thing hooked up, like you know, to my widescreen TV, right. And I'm showing people pictures off of it at home. I can lay it, lounge back on the couch and just kind of wave at it. And right. My pictures will will go through. You know, same with like turning pages in an ebook. That kind yep. of thing. So her presentation, but it's given people options. So again, the adaptive keyboard, same deal. If you're if you're right. if your life is about VoIP and you're on right. video conferences 24/7, you're going to sit right. on that thing all the right. time. If you want to be traditional and do the function keys, you've yeah. got them. But right. but um, I get it. I think I get right. it. So when I first saw it, I had no I had no idea what to make of the adaptive keyboard. I got to be honest. Yeah. yeah, if you kind of bring it down to like a sentence, it's to add more options for doing things without getting into uh, you know what psychologist and uh, uh, designers called the paradox of choice where you give people so many right. choices yeah. that they are like overwhelmed by them yeah. and it actually increase it actually ends up decreasing productivity because they have too many choices right. to choose from yep. so that's really what we're trying to do here yep. is add more choice without making it any you know 
confusingly complex. Absolutely. All right. So, All right, Kev. Uh, I think that's it. I think that covers it, man. That's the brand new, all new, fresh out of the box ThinkPad X1 Carbon. Uh, Thanks for being with us. Kevin Gav from CS 2014. Take, Take care. Bye.